Okay, so here's the water pump. Uh, it's been painted. New bearings. New seals. New cam. And uh, I'm going to put it back in the boat. So we got to get this good. little clip out right here. And to do that, a little. Okay, so we put it in the vise to hold it. And then we pop it. Okay, now to get the bearing out, I'm going to need a little press to do that. So I'm going to need to make something that that's so going to need another little assembly to uh, press that shaft out in with the uh, homemade press. Okay, so here's the board. It's got a hole drilled in it. And there's the bottom with the bearings. And the bearings will fit in that hole. So we're going to center this right like this. And then on this side, I've got another little block with a board in it. I'm going to set that right on top there. And then we're going to get a big clamp. And we're going to squeeze this right down. It should push that right out into the uh, right out into the other side. Okay, so here's the setup. I got this C-clamp right here. Uh, adjustable clamp, whatever you call it. And um, I got it assembled with the bearing and the, everything's all lined up. So I'm going to set this down here. Let's see if I can press it out. Let's see, it should be lined up right there. Let's see. Oh yeah, there it goes. coming out. You can see it's coming out there. I might have to stack this up a little bit, so I'm going to reposition my jig. Okay, so I've now got it spaced up with a couple of blocks so it doesn't fall. And you can see the shaft is now down inside. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to turn this block over like this. Set that right in position. Just like that. And set the clamp back on it and that felt like it dropped out so let's see what we got take the clamp off lift the pump up it's not quite out yet a little bit more to go I can do that with my finger so here's the uh, here's the bearings they just came out and there's two seals up in there there's the bearings. We just pressed them out. And there's the seals. The seals are all stuck up in there. So we'll figure out how to deal with those in a few minutes. Let's take a look at this uh, shaft here and the bearings and see whether or not we need to replace it. And uh, can't tell yet, but I have a new one. So I think the new one's going to go in. And there you have it. Okay, now we got to take this little screw out and uh, get the uh, insides out. So, let's see. Should have a little washer on it. see the washer must be inside the hole yep there it is a little copper washer and there, there came out the cam and there's the copper washer right there so we got to get that out of there and there's the old copper washer we're gonna set that aside. okay so I just pressed the uh, the seals out and uh, there's one there's the other one and there's a little spacer so Got it all apart. Just gonna clean it up with the wire wheel and get it ready to go back together. Give us a chance to look at the housing, make sure there's no cracks. I don't think there are, but at least we can repaint it. Look. Okay, one thing you want to look at when you get the pump out is to make sure there's nothing stuck in there. So, um, what I found was. Right up in this hole, there is a piece of an impeller or some sort of rubber that 
piece of an impeller. Wedged right in there, blocking the flow to the engine. And uh, didn't find that until we got the whole thing out and started cleaning it up. So good thing we're doing this. Okay, so here's the pump housing. It's pretty much cleaned up and ready to go. There's still a little bit of paint in there, but uh, I think it's uh, not going to matter. It's kind of down in the crevices where you can't get to it. And uh, so it's pretty much all cleaned up from the outside. And uh, get ready to reassemble it. Okay, so here's the old shaft with the old bearings. And when you put this all back together, you got to get the distance from this flat end right here to the flat side of this bearing right here. That's got to be 15 millimeters. So um, you're going to need one of these little micrometer and you're not going to want to push those bearings any further than that down otherwise you'll have a problem now this is the old shaft and there's some scoring here right right in here you can see the scoring on the shaft and um, this little bit of red paint is is that they had the thing assembled and then they painted it so um, we're gonna just not reuse any of this hardware and that that paints left over from the weep hole and you can see that right here. And you want that open because that's that's a key indicator to tell you if you got water leaking out. So make sure that everything lines up correctly with that. So it's the old the old housing. We'll set that over there. And here's our new shaft. We got a new shaft. And we got new bearings. We've got all the new bearings and the parts here. So we're gonna put all this stuff together. And um, gotta press it all together. So I'm Put together a little press here. Found a fitting here that's the right diameter. When you're pressing these in, you don't want to put any force on the outer race at all. You just want it on this inside ring. So I've got this little um, brass fitting here, and I can drop this down in. And you'll see. So this will fit in like this, and we can put pressure on this. Actually, it'll go this way, and uh, we can put pressure on this end. Okay, so. We're going to set this board on the table and we put this one to one coupler in it. We drilled a half inch hole and then set this in here, just pounded it in. It's not going anywhere. And um, it's just a piece of brass for hose. But what's nice about it is it lines up perfect with the inner race on the bearings. So when you set the bearings in, this will form a thing to press it down with. Now, what I really don't want to do is overextend these bearings and shoot them too far uh, up when I push this way. I'm going to be pressing on this end, and that shaft's going to slide down into this tube. Pressure's going to be on this inner ring, and I want this just to line up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a spacer in here. And I'm going to set a spacer that's the exact distance from the top of the table right up to the... Uh, right up to the point where they get that 15 millimeters. So that'll that'll let me set this in. I can press down till I hit the spacer and that should end up right at 15 millimeters. So we gotta set this up and to do that I've got a piece of uh, steel rod here and I'm gonna cut the piece of steel rod off and I'm gonna drop it in that hole. Okay so to measure the uh, the length of the rod that I'm gonna need for the spacer I'm gonna turn this over I've got my little digital micrometer here. I'm going to stick it in the hole here. You can see the bearings on one side. And I'm just going to push it down gently till it's flush. And now I know I've got the right height. Okay, so I put a piece of tape around the rod and I measured it. And I got my 38.7 uh, millimeters of uh, distance here. Okay, yeah, so here's my little spacer. 30, 38.7 uh, millimeters long, precisely. There it is. We're going to drop that right down in that hole, like that. We're going to take the old coupling, or the old uh, shaft, with the uh, bearings. We're going to set it down on there. And it is resting right perfectly on the top of that, on the top of that old, of that spacer. So when we put pressure on this, we'll go right down to that point, and that'll stop. So that should set the height correctly. And we're going to put a mark on this side anyways of the other piece. So the other shaft will have some tape on it or something. So it won't, uh, so we'll have a, have a good witness mark on there. Okay, so I measured the other, uh, the other shaft right here from there to there. And uh, 
what I'm going to do is I put some marks on here the same distance and I'm going to cover this with some tape so I don't mar it while I'm working on it. I don't want to nick it at all while we're uh, putting it together so that we can uh, make sure those other uh, shafts. Okay, so there's the first bearing. We kind of got it pressed in, just partially. Okay, so here's the uh, here's a big C clamp, and there's the bearing sitting in there. And the key is is to get this lined up on the bottom so that shaft runs right through this uh, through this tube, and uh, hopefully that'll. Okay, so. We got it set up we're going to wind it in you can see it going down in right there just fine and we're at the end of the end of the um the clamp i've got to reset the clamp okay and now we're going to press the second bearing in so i started it and we'll see if this will go down oh it moved we gotta move it over a little bit there it goes Get it lined up. There it goes. Go right down in. Okay, now we gotta line up a little bit more. And we're gonna run out of clamp again. Okay, so for the last little bit, we just uh, moved it over to the vise. So I've got my spacer down inside this tube. And there's the two bearings. They're pressed They're almost to the end where they need to be. There's just a little bit more to go. So I'm going to do this in a few steps, measuring each time to make sure we don't have any uh, any uh, issues. So I want to get this within a half a millimeter. Okay, so there we have it. We're at 15.03 millimeters, and we needed to be within a half. So um, I guess we're done pressing the bearings. So our little bearing press worked pretty good. Um, just use this brass fitting stuck in a board and then set a spacer up so here's one of the spacers I actually made two spacers um, I finally got to the end I had to okay so now we're going to insert the uh, the seals and here's the first seal and it just gets pushed right down in here just push that right down in with my thumb get it lined up where it okay. goes so the seals in on one side and then you got to put this in so spacer and these little bumps need to be facing um, this direction up so in it goes and this little poster pointing up on it and we've got the other seal here and now this time the lettering is pointing down so lines up the other way and we can just push that right down in there get it in the right spot okay so press the pump in, I've got the spacer, and it's got the little spacer down in there so it holds the space between the bearings and the end of the shaft exactly right. And then we've got this board on top, and you can see the bearings here, we're just going to turn this, and then they go. So there they wind themselves in, and they're in. Okay, so I got the bearings in. And now we're going to check it. So I've got the uh, little micrometer here, and I'm wind that out to about I don't know 20 20 millimeters. And I'll just shove this down right here. And uh, let's see. Oh, I got to move it again. Let's see. We got 15 point. 0 0.04 millimeters, so I'd say the bearings are in correctly. We got them within a half a millimeter. Okay, so we just put the C-clip back in, so that's a new C-clip. There it is. Okay, so um, we're back down the boat, and we got the pump, and I had to go get some gasket sealant, so I got some Permatex number one, and they say to put some of that on the inside of the cam. So I'm going to do that, and also on the threads, it's a little screw. So I put it in at the house without the sealant, and now I'm down here. I can. Okay, I got so the we sealant. Got the pump all done, and we got it masked off, and we're going to spray paint it red. Be ready to put it back in the boat as soon as the paint's dry. Okay, so there's the pump, all painted nice and red, and we'll let that dry. Put it back in the boat. Okay, so we're going to put the uh, pump back in. And the first thing I'm going to do is set it on here and make sure that it all fits correctly. 
and more importantly we're going to line the shaft up and I've already done that so it goes all the way in and fits flush just like you'd expect. I haven't put the gasket in but this is a lot easier to adjust before you put the impeller in. So you get it lined up, you take it off, now you know exactly where that needs to be Here's the, the way the engine sits. It's this right little there. cardboard gasket you got to put on between the engine and the pump and uh, according to the Westerbeek guys you don't put uh, any um, sealant or anything on this. It's just a dry paper gasket. At least it looks like paper. I'm not real sure. Okay, so there's the pump. It's all back in. And uh, we're going to give it a shot and see how it works. Okay, so we got these 13 millimeter bolts here, 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 and around the back. And they've got a washer on them, lock washer. And you can get to the back with the deep socket. So here's the deep socket. And this deep socket can, can loosen the bolt up in the back. So that's a trick. The others are pretty straightforward. You can get to them with the open end wrench right here. So let's see, get the water pump off. <laughs> 